Oh, yeah, you do, buddy. You better watch the damned. They are going to break the chains. And then they're coming to get you. And you'll get your balls to the wall. Yeah, this is the Balls to the Wall program because uh, Moose Girl's out on the town tonight. So Freakers will be next week rather than this week. Uh, so, <laughs> well, she, if she decides to come to the show next week, it'll be next week. But Moose Girl went down to the uh, local pub there called The Mousetrap to see a couple of bands called Over Unders and Loose Juices. So you get me here, Grimner, doing balls to the wall, man. And uh, it is Friday night, as uh, as is planned. August 23rd, 2019. August 23rd. That means it's Beth Z's birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Beth. <laughs> Hope you had a good birthday, Beth. Seriously. Um, is there going to be a show on after this? After this, well, tomorrow, I, I'm, I'm sorry, talking to Chuskura here in the, the chat room. He's asking if there's going to be a show on after this. This is a three-hour show, <laughs> and after this, there's nothing until uh, tomorrow at noon Eastern. So, <laughs> all right, all right, anyway. Uh, welcome to everybody out there, where all, all the various places that you uh, may be, uh, whether that be on realliberty.org or freedomsnetwork.com, realrlmradio.xyz, reallibertymedia.com, on the Freakers Ball show page, hopefully, that's where the video's at, or if you're at the direct live video feed there on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia, then uh, welcome, welcome to y'all. And thank you, Beth and Kate. It's not won't be my birthday here for three more hours, so I'm good. But I got some gifts. <laughs> some people sent me some gifts, so I got. So uh, that's really cool. Uh, we'll figure out uh, the, at least the one of them needs to be figured out. The other two are, are, uh, yeah, yeah. It is the oldest she's ever been. It, she set a record. She's like the chosen one. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so, um, yeah, I was having a little trouble there getting connected up to Vaughn, and I, I, I was looking earlier at this thing, you know, they're, they're they're trying to raise funds over there at Vaughn, I understand, they need money, uh, and, they, and they offer various things, you can either just donate them some money, or you can do it like a, a monthly thing, uh, and they have two plans, VIP Basic and VIP Gold, and the Gold plan actually looks pretty nice. It's 15 bucks a month, though, and since we only do this one show, uh, only do Freakers slash uh, Balls to the Wall um, on uh, uh, the uh, the Vaughn, there's no other video shows going live, um, I, I, I don't know that there, that's $15 a month just to, to run Freakers, uh, and, you know, uh, if, if they happen to, to cut us off or whatever... Um, and like I said, I've been looking for other video streaming platforms, uh, free ones, and uh, I haven't had a whole lot of luck there. Uh, it's possible at some point we, we may just have to go to, to audio only, which I'm perfectly fine with. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll, we'll hang in there. We'll hang in there. Maybe I'll try a month of, of the Vaughn Gold plan. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, that, that's that. So, uh, welcome to all those folks out there and, uh, anybody else that's tuned in from wherever they may be tuned in from, uh, always good to have you here with us. I noticed we got, uh, quite a crowd here in the chat room here on irc.freenode.net. Yeah, we got a, we got a large, a large and boisterous group. Uh, great to have you here with us. But yeah, we got the barman, who's my bot, and myself, and the moose girl is logged in, although, out on the town. Uh, yeah, see, Kate, that's the thing is, you know, do people really want to shell out three bucks a month? Or even if it was 15 people doing a dollar a month, they, they, I, it's, I don't usually get, we don't usually get 15 viewers, concurrent viewers, so it's... <laughs> All right, anyway, we got DC and Asmo and Chalcedony and the Echelon. We got the N7, free enslaved. Miss Graham Z, who's down to uh, 
two more shows, two more shows left there uh, for Miss Graham Z. We're going to miss her. We're going to miss her shows. She'll still be around, but we're going to miss her shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is that too, Kate. Uh, we got Java Doctor in the Meester Meister Brow, the Ponder Gunder, Poopster and Prince, who did their debut show last night here on Real Liberty Media. Yes, indeed. The Power Hour, Print, Poopster and Prince. Good stuff. You check it out next week. Listen to the, uh, the, the podcast if you missed it. And, uh, check it out. Yes, we got Miss Kate, Mr. Rob Works, soon to be an Arky. Yeah, down there with Vinny in Arky Land. We got Mr. Rome's in the Van of White Pot. Venereo. That sounds too close to venereal. <laughs> we got the Weather Dork Pot. Miss Bessie, birthday girl herself. We got the Phantom in uh, Anti and Ch Choscura. Choscura. <laughs> Coffee guy. See, I, don't know, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know some of these people. Which is interesting. Odd, because uh, usually I know everybody. But some of these people, I don't know them. So. Anyway, howdy and hi and welcome to all the, the new folk. Uh, we got Frumpy and Goober and Gromit and JJ's. The Kiss, Matt WJ2002. Interesting. Thank you there, Romes. I appreciate that. Yes, indeed, Miss Kate and uh, Beth Z, whoever else said happy birthday. So, and it's not till tomorrow, so, or it's not till at least three more hours. Anyway, more cowbell. You here? You here, buddy? I got a fever. The only cure. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got Mr. Snick in the Pone Sauce and the real Donnie Woo. Real Donnie Woo. Is there a fake Donnie Woo out there that somebody just ain't told us about? I, I, I don't know. Well, welcome, real Donnie Woo. We got the Sock Puppet and the Smart As Bot and the Holiest Roger. Roger Dodger. All right, so that's that's a, it was a, quite the group of folk we got going on here uh, on this particular evening. Um, summer's summer's winding down. Summer's coming to an end. You know, um, this is the uh, the twenty third of August, and uh, uh, generally speaking, people consider Labor Day the official end of summer, although it actually goes until uh, the twentieth of uh, September. So, you know. However you want to look at it, but uh, uh, in, in that, I'm I'm kind of glad that it's going away. I'm not really a big fan of the heat. However, my garden, I'm just starting to get some some stuff. You know, um, I, I've got a couple real tiny little 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 cantaloupes going. I got one at least I found. I, I can't find everything uh, with within the within the plants. There could be more in there. Um, <laughs> and also I got one tiny little watermelon about the size of a, a marble or something along those lines, about an inch, inch in diameter. So I, I don't think, I don't, I don't know how much, how much warm weather we got left for them to grow to something in that is useful. Um, I got some tomatoes going though. So I got, I don't know, six, seven, eight tomatoes going uh, on various plants and, but more are sprouting, more, more, are, more are growing now. So uh, I, I, I think I could wind up with some tomatoes, and I'm hoping so anyway. I, I did put a lot of work into this stupid garden. <laughs> Next year it'll be much better. But this was my practice year, my first year. Uh, only another month, okay. So, I, I, yeah, I don't know how fast they grow. Everything grows so slow here. It's, it's like the, the garden's in a different uh, time speed, uh, time scale. Uh, where everything just uh, creeps along. But next year, I will have stuff going um, <laughs> at uh, a better rate because I will use some... Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm starting a compost heap out there in the yard, uh, and, and that will be... I will, I will move it from where it is now. I got, like, several little compost heaps going uh, just with, like... Uh, dead stuff that I've chopped down, you know, uh, wh whatever, where they be, uh, weeds and such like that. And, and I'll get that all moved over to my area where I, where I like the garden and, uh, and we'll get that going. That'll be, that'll be good. Uh, that should help. And, and I've got, you know, a big old bucket full of food scraps and such that I, that, that, uh, will be mixed in there. And I'm thinking just do a compost heap rather than, than putting it in a, like a box or something like that, because why not? What's the difference, really? Um, 
we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, so I think next year I'll, I'll wind up with some faster growing stuff. With any luck. With any luck. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. But it, like I said, this is the first year, so uh, that, that's all been quite the little challenge. Uh, assuming, of course, that I may get something. Assuming that the grasshoppers, which are everywhere right now, uh, don't eat everything. And I've got, uh, I mean, it's it's the invasion of the grasshoppers like a normal year. There were there were less grasshoppers during the drought years, but the drought's gone. The drought is fully gone here in New Mexico, and um, and so the grasshoppers are back in abundance. Uh, and they're not eating the stuff I want them to eat, which is the weeds. <laughs> At least I guess they're not. I don't I don't really know. It doesn't look like they're eating the vegetables either, though. So or the melons. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but uh, it's it's been fun. It's been fun doing all that stuff. It is it has been a lot of work, but um, uh, you cannot compost meat. Maybe you can. I don't know, but I've been told you can't. Um, so I will not try attempt to compost any meats. I've, I've heard that's really not good. <laughs> Maybe if you're growing carnivorous plants, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so I'll, I'll this year when I when I, went, I did I thought I prepared the soil pretty good. I went out there and I, and I, I I bought a little tiller. Uh, what do they call it? They call it something else, cultivator. Um, but it's a tiller basically. Um, and I and I went over that dirt several times and everything seemed nice and loosened up. But you can't really do anything. I mean because it's it's clay it's all just pure clay so even if you you till it all up and you make it all nice and loose it doesn't stay nice and loose but when i mix in all the other stuff that that'll be composting that that'll help a lot that that'll that'll give me uh, a lot of aeration i think is is the proper word for that and also whatever minerals i don't know whatever's in the stuff you compost uh, the green stuff and the brown stuff and the food stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Any, anyway, that's that on that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, let's let's just start off with some music here, as we like to do on uh, this particular program. And we will do a where, 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 here. Okay, we will start off uh, with some uh, worms. Yeah, I, I I already checked out some worms there on the uh, on the Amazon, and they sell worms pretty cheap. You can get like a thousand worms or something for ten bucks. Um, but I didn't. I thought I'd probably be best to wait on the worms until after winter. <laughs> I don't really know, <laughs> but I, I think that's probably the idea. Yeah, and and they also make what do they call worm casings or something like that. So I mean, there's lots of different stuff I can do that I didn't do this year. But this is like I said, the practice year, test year, starting year. This is the band called the Stranglers. So always, brotherhood of man and beautiful lover. All right, that was nice, very nice. Yes, indeed. That was a gal by the name of Iza I Z A doing I Put a Spell on You. Prior to that was Ronnie James Dio with Rainbow in the Dark. And we kicked it off there with the Stranglers nice and sleazy. Uh, you know, I know Moose Girl, if she was here, she, she would have tried to gong nice and sleazy the Stranglers there. I, I love that stuff, that, that album, uh, that band, actually. Uh, the, old, the old stuff there, man. Uh, from the Stranglers, but uh, yeah, she would have not enjoyed that. <laughs> oh well, that's all right. She's out having a good old time tonight, so <laughs> she 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 can't gong me when she's not here. <laughs> uh, the album though by by the Stranglers called Rattus Norvicicus is a, is an awesome, awesome, great album. In case anybody's ever interested in any of that uh, old stuff old punk era stuff yep <laughs> oh man so anyway one of the uh, one of the gifts that I that I received 
uh, today uh, was from my sister, and it was off of my um, off of my um, Amazon wish list, which is not really so much of a wish list as a stuff that I well I, I put stuff in there that I, I I find interesting as I'm cruising through the Amazon uh, site looking for a particular thing, and I'll come across stuff. Anyway, so the the thing is, it's called an air fryer. I don't know if you, any of y'all are familiar with an air fryer. I, I really don't even remember putting it on my list, but apparently I did at some point. Put it on my list, and and she went ahead and and purchased it and sent it to me. Thanks, sis. Of course, she's not listening, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, uh, apparently you can cook all kinds of stuff in it, uh, which is good, and you cook it with just air. So it says for some stuff, maybe you put a little bit of oil in there. I don't know. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. But, uh, which, of course, it's, you know, not my birthday till tomorrow, so I uh, probably shouldn't take it out of the box yet. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be a really cool thing to use. Of course, I don't really have a uh, countertop space for it at this point in time. Uh, but it's possible I can uh, remove some of the other stuff from my countertop to make room for this device. Uh, since it seems to be very versatile uh, in cooking a wide range of foods, uh, maybe stuff that I, I currently use the crock pot for, I can cook with that thing. So, uh, yeah. Um, you can certainly request music, Mr. Choskira. I think you're a Mr. Uh, Choskira. Uh, you just type in there, exclamation point, R-E-Q, then a space, and then it has. you have to use a, uh, a YouTube uh, video. The only the only requests accepted are from YouTube videos. Sorry if you're a fan of other sites, uh, but uh, that's that's all we that's all we do here, because uh, that's the way I have the thing set up. It may change in the future, but for now, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that. And, and try not to do like a list. Uh, yeah, see, that's not it. You have to actually use a URL. Uh, you, you can't just uh, type a name like that. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'll let you know how how it goes with that uh, air fryer because, like I said, it looks like it's pretty cool, man. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Did I start my recording? Yeah, I did. Okay, we're going. Good. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I forget to start the recording back up after a set, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so. But just, just like that, man, you did it. Yeah, you're sharper than the average. I'm not even saying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's see. Where, where are we going to start today? Where are we going to start today? Um... Well, I guess I continue. I, I can do this as a, a sort sort of semi continuation uh, from the from the Grim Leftovers program for Monday night when I when I spent the first half of the show talking about the global warming hoax. Uh, this here is posted on climatismblog. dot com, and it's called the top ten uh, climate change alarmist myths unearthed number two sea level rise and and i think um i think flash somebody uh actually uh posted this over there on the minds.com website earlier I'm, I'm not positive but i i think it was um yeah yeah so uh, anyway i'll 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 like i said i'll let, I'll let you know how it goes with the air fryer i'm i'm, I'm it's 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 gonna be a new experience for me all right. So here we go with a quote. Climate alarmism is a gigantic fraud. It only survives by suppressing dissent, dissent, not dissent, dissent, and by spending tens of billions of dollars of public, meaning stolen money, every year on pseudo-scientific propaganda. That's a guy by the name of Leo Goldstein said that there. So uh, the, the intro here, excessive or exaggerated alarm about real or imagined threat is fundamental in driving the human-induced uh, global warming scratched out climate change narrative. Because you all know it started with 
global warming. And that wasn't flying so much because, well, there was no global warming. So they just changed it to climate change. <laughs> the most popular climatic and weather-related events as marketed by the climate crisis industry, the CCI, if you will, uh, fall well within the bounds of natural variability. So in order for such events to make the headlines, attract taxpayer funding for, quote, research, unquote, and advance the misanthropic man-made climate change agenda, they must be accompanied by an inflated language, an urgent tone, imagery of doom, and in many cases, just for fraudulent data, fake data, made-up data. It's all nonsense. In this series, we take an objective, skeptical look at 10 of the more popular metrics used by the warming alarmists to push the CAGW, the Catastrophic Anthropogenic Global Warming Narrative, testing the veracity of the all-too-often wild and alarmist claims associated with each. Let's see, what are we getting here? Um, the the real issue... Well, pollution's a problem. There's no doubt pollution's a problem. But that's that's local. Well, pollution is local. It's not global. And it's not causing, causing climate change. Anyway, so he goes on here with the sea level rise here. The seas are rising! That's the uh, scare tactic there. You've read it, seen it, heard about it just about everywhere in conjunction with the climate change debate. However, the very statement, rising sea levels, is deceptive from the start. Sea levels both rise and fall, depending on where you are on the planet. Absolute sea level varies from negative to positive to stable, depending on a range of regional factors, including local vertical land motion, land use, salinity, regional ocean circulations, ocean heat and content, uh, content and tidal variations. Negative change. And they have a graph here showing you over there in Narvik, Norway, the negative change, the uh, sea level falling, I suppose. Same thing for Stockholm, Sweden, and huge sea level falling in Juneau, Alaska. Then there's some positive change areas. The battery in New York, uh, positive or increasing a little bit. Uh, La Havre, France. Uh, anyway, and then there's the stable. Remember, the sinking Pacific Island nations, the climate theory obsessed mainstream media has gleefully pawned the emotional link between climate change and sinking tropical islands to push their man-made global warming phony agenda. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little quote here from the BBC. The tiny island nation of Tuvulu looks set to become a victim of global warming, with the entire country predicted to be washed away in 50 years. And that was in 2002, the BBC there. Tuvalu's plight even formed part of the basis for the arguably the most hysterical fake news claim in the history of climate alarmism. The UN's prediction that by the end of 2010, climate change would have created 50 million environmental refugees. Oops. I think you missed the little mark on that one nine years ago. <laughs> Climatism, along with the climate uh, skeptic, uh, denier, denier, this climate denier community, as if anybody's actually denying that climate exists. Uh, anyway, the climate denier community have been citing actual scientific data and empirical observations that have consistently contradicted the hysterical claims made by the CLAP, the uh, corporate layman's propaganda commonly called the mainstream media, of drowning island nations for several years. And they got some charts here uh, showing such information. So, um, <laughs> anyway, you, you know, I, I, I have railed on and on and on um, uh, about 
this whole uh, climate change, global warming nonsense, the whole climate gate thing that got swept under the rug, uh, where they admitted to faking all the data, where they admitted to hiding the decline. Uh, they didn't actually a admit to uh, removing the, <laughs> the warming period from back in the Middle Ages, but they did exactly that, um, uh, whether they admitted to it or not. Uh, anyway, the article is fairly long and, uh, and covers a lot of areas. Uh, and this article is specifically, specifically uh, on this one topic of sea level rise, which is not occurring, has not occurred uh, any more than the normal variability of it. And, um, well, it's just plainly, plain, not likely to occur. Uh, on the first part of uh, the uh, this this uh, this thing here, um, uh, this series, he covered uh, drought, uh, and the next one will be ocean ocean acidification. So uh, look forward to ocean acidification uh, on that. Uh, but be sure that uh, when it comes up, I will get to those as well. Uh, two requests for the hip, the tragically hip, apparently. <laughs> All right, Prince, thanks there, and uh, Meister Brow, thanks for those requests. Appreciate it. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. All right. Oh, man, I tell you. All right, all right. Now, last week, I think it was like, yeah, it was last Friday. I, I talked a little bit about uh, the microplastics that are being found in the snow in various places. The, the microplastics from garbage that get washed out to sea or end up in the landfills or whatever. And the, and the plastic breaks down to a point where it's just tiny little, uh, almost microscopic threads of plastic. And they get sucked up into the air uh, as, as with the evaporation and such. But apparently, because they don't want to step on the toes of the industry, the plastics industry, industries, I suppose I should say, which is, you know, uh, pretty much the petroleum industry, um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, has came out and said, banned microplastics pose no risk to human health. No risk. <laughs> to human health. So you can breathe all the microplastics you want. You can drink them on down in your water. Uh, yeah, it, uh, no no risk. Don't you worry about the microplastics, according to the World Health Organization. Are you buying that? I'm not buying that. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. This is on reason.com, by the way. It says here, no evidence microplastics in water harm human health. Of course, there's no evidence to the contrary either. As folks rush to stop everything from exfoliating soaps to plastic straws in the name of preventing water pollution, here's another reminder that they're following the ban first, ban first, Ask questions later model that's all too common amongst governments. According to a news study, and it uh, doesn't really say who funded this study here, but I'm guessing one of the uh, petroleum industries or plastics industries. And in the news study from the WHO, no data suggests overt health concerns associated with exposure to microplastic particles through drinking water. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Not buying it. <laughs> Microplastics, small pieces of plastic, generally defined as less than 5 millimeters long, come from bigger pieces of plastic breaking down, and also from microbeads, sometimes used in plastic products like the body wash and toothpaste. So you're actually brushing your teeth with this plastic or 
washing washing your body with this plastic. The the federal government banned microbead usage in cosmetics and toiletries back in 2015, and states have also passed their own bans. But microbeads are not a recent problem, notes National Ocean Service. Uh, plastic microbeads first appeared in personal care products about 50 years ago. The plastics increasingly replacing natural ingredients. As recently as 2012, the issue was still relatively unknown. Now the WHO review has found no evidence that these microplastics are a danger to human health, despite being ubiquitous in the environment and detected in marine water, wastewater, fresh water, food, air, and drinking water, both bottled and tap varieties. In analyzing 50 previous studies on the subject, the WHO researchers determined that microplastics greater than 150 micrometers are not likely to be absorbed in the human body, and uptake of smaller particles is expected to be limited. Now, you might be interested to know that a lot of these plastics, micro or otherwise, uh, prior to them breaking down, are coated with a chemical called BPA, bisphenol A, which is known to uh, be a uh, endocrine disruptor. I, I, I do believe that's the proper word for it. Uh, I, I'm not, I, don't quote me on that. But what it does is it uh, kind of eliminates the, the, the masculinity in various animals, including humans. Uh, yeah, it, it kills off your testosterone, this BPA stuff, that if you purchase bottled water at the grocery store or wherever, the bottles are coated on the inside with BPA. So are the soda cans that you may be drinking your soda out of. So are the food cans that you might, might be purchasing, food in a can, uh, various whatever, vegetables and such. Yes, soups, all of that stuff. The inside of the cans are coated with BPA. And you're wondering, huh, is there a feminization of the, the male population going on? <laughs> and, it, and, and you would be right to believe that because BPA. Kate's pointing out here in the chat that she sees BPA-free as a feature on some cans now. Yeah, oh, hey, that's right, your beer also has the BPA on inside the cans. <laughs> Anyways, they don't really get into that here in the article. I just thought I'd uh, uh, throw that in there, mention that along the way. Furthermore, they found a low health concern for human exposure to chemicals and plastics through ingestion of drinking water, even in extreme exposure circumstances. As for chemicals and microbial pathogens associated with microplastics in water, no reliable information suggests it's a concern, according to the WHO. As they note, this doesn't mean there are no environmental risks, I'm not talking about personal health risks, environmental risks to overabundant plastic use, but the group cautions that care must be taken so that addressing one problem does not simply result in the creation of another. <laughs> See, for instance, the new non-reusable paper straws McDonald's has employed to replace its recyclable plastic ones. It adds that the benefits of plastic also must be considered before introducing policies and initiatives. And let me just say this about that, and something else that I've talked about semi-extensively from time to time is the fact that you can make all the plastics you want that will not have any kind of problems like this out of hemp. Hemp plastics are the solution to all of this. Of course, that will be fought heavily um, by, by, by the petroleum industries and the plastics industries because they don't want to replace that, that stuff that they're using. 
Yeah, anyway. So, uh, yeah, you, you kind of get the idea, the concept here, what, what this article is talking about. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anytime you see people talking about plastics, just remind them, hemp plastic, hemp plastic, shove it down their throat. Make them understand that hemp plastic will not have any of these problems. Hemp plastic will break down absolutely and, and, and <laughs> oh, it'll solve just so many problems. And you could use hemp for such a wide variety of other things as well. But, uh, you know, just whatever, whatever. Um, now, you might want to take over, go, go on, head on over and uh, disprove uh, the, those first two articles that I shared with you. And so you'll say, I want to fact check this stuff. I'm going to head to Snopes. <laughs> All right, this, this next article is satire. Just, just, just warning you up front. <laughs> From the Babylon Bee. Concerning survey finds too many people believe Snopes is a legitimate fact checking website. Now, I tell you that this is satire with the caveat that it's absolutely accurate. <laughs> yes, too many people actually believe the freaking Snopes. Uh, and they got, a, they got a breakdown here, a chart. shows about two-thirds of people believe that Snopes is a legitimate fact-checking site. About a quarter uh, understand that Snopes is satire. And a, a smaller section there think Snopes is the name of a rapper. <laughs> a troubling new survey released by the Babylon Bee confirmed Wednesday that too many people think that Snopes is a real fact-checking website. We found, uh, the survey found that over 60% of the people believe Snopes is a real website, while only 25% understand that it's satire. The remaining minority thinks that Snopes is the name of a gangster rapper, from California. One of those guys who makes hip-hop about the devil's lettuce and shooting people. In the, <laughs> in the study, we went to Walmart and grabbed random people by the arm and started shouting at them, Hey, do you think Snopes is real? Uh, the ones who didn't run away screaming or call for security responded, and of those a few dozen people, we got our results. Most said, sure, yeah, whatever, please just leave me alone and don't hurt me. While others said they, they thought it was a satire site, a few people said, Snopes Dog, I loved his album straight out of Compton. <laughs> Despite the fact checks on Snopes.com clearly being labeled fact checks, many people believe they were uh, taken by the, in by the site's name. Snopes has managed to fool many readers with its brand of fact checking in the past. We're not sure if muddying the details of actual investigative journalism qualifies Snopes as a real fact-checker. This is clearly a threat to, mo to democracy, said the head researcher we specifically paid to say this is clearly a threat to democracy. Maybe, we, maybe people who read Snopes just aren't informed or educated as people who simply watch Jeopardy! to get their information or call their Aunt Carla to ask her what the latest gossip is. Hey, I watch Jeopardy. Oh, not to get information, just, just for the fun of it. Just because I can beat all those people. <laughs> anyway, well, whatever the case, one thing is clear. Democracy can't long survive if people keep believing Snopes is a real fact-checking site. Note, you do not need to criticize the methods uh, for this survey, as we have a pie chart which makes it 100% legitimate. <laughs> oh, Babylon B. <laughs> you crack me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get you some more music right here. Oh, man. Uh, uh, that site's just too funny. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do some Papa Chubby right now, Papa. Do the Papa, yes, and I did it. Sup yo? <laughs> All right, this song is called Rolling and Tumbling. Dig it. Ah. 
Oh, yeah. Walking on the sun there with Smash Mouth, who I understand from the chat, uh, were terrible in concert, which I never saw them. However, let me tell you who was great in concert was the Ramones. I saw the Ramones several times. They were freaking awesome in concert. Anyway, before that, we had Steve Lee, the old Aussie there, doing I Like Guns. That is a Freaker's Ball classic. Indeed, and we kicked it off with Papa Chubby doing rolling and tumbling. Yeah, nobody plays guitar like Papa Chubby, man. Not that he's the best guitarist out there in the world, but he's excellent. Uh, and uh, I, I dig Papa Chubby's music, man. He's a, he's, he's a, he's, he's a top, top-notch blues man, to be sure. Yeah, the Ramones, man, fuck, they, they kicked ass. <laughs> Yeah, they were they were great. They were great. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, I, I I've, I've seen a lot of bands in concert, and uh, but no, nobody really compared to the Ramones. I mean, it, it was just such energy in the crowd uh, for 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 a Ramones concert, and it just 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 terrific stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of great bands, man. I've seen Iron Maiden a few times, AC/DC, uh, whoever. I saw a bunch of bands. <laughs> Judas Priest, Quiet Riot. I saw Quiet Riot in a little tiny club before they became a band, before they became a, a, a powerhouse band. Um, so uh, yeah, I, you know, I've seen a lot of bands, but uh, the Ramones, man, that uh, they they were something else. They they were definitely uh, something to behold in their day, in their prime. So, if you missed them, you know, maybe you're too young. I don't know. I, I imagine that uh, Prince was probably too young to see them live, uh, at least back in that that era. So, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Everybody, look to the skies. Heads up. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming to get you. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> From the New York Post here. Uh, NASA monitoring a 2,100-foot asteroid on track to skim Earth. Skim Earth. Oh, I love the Clash, man. I never did get to see them live, though. Uh, no, I never did. I, I, I saw a lot of other punk bands, but I never did get to see the Clash live. That's that was a shame. Uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I love the Clash though. Anyway, here it is. A huge asteroid, huge, huge, as the Donald would say. A huge asteroid that's more than twice as big as the Empire State Building is set to skim past Earth. In three weeks, the monster space rock is called 467317. Well, how creative. And it will be whizzing past us at 14,361 miles per hour on September 14th. <laughs> Meister Brow, I can see you being 86th from many a bar. Anyway, <laughs> there is no need to panic, though the asteroid should only come within 3.3 million miles of Earth. Is that really skimming the Earth? 3.3 million miles? I don't know. Yeah, you need a shower, Rob. Whew, I can smell you from here. Uh, anyway, however, in the grand scheme of space, this is not a large distance at all. So NASA considers it to be a close approach. In the estimated, it has an estimated diameter of anywhere from 3,120 feet to 1.3 miles. You know, that's that's quite the range there. You can't get any better estimate than that. New York City's Empire State Building is 1,454 feet high at its tip. Okay. In fact, the space rock. If the space rock was a building on Earth, it would be the second tallest on the globe. Uh, any fast-moving space object that comes within around 4.65 million miles is considered potentially hazardous. 
by the overly cautious, lying space organization known as NASA. Elon Musk has sparked fears that Earth would not be able to defend itself against a giant asteroid. It won't. If a giant asteroid wants to come to Earth, you're not defending yourself against it. Let me tell you that right now. I don't care what you guys think you got planned to defend the Earth from giant asteroids. You don't. You can't. It's not going to happen. Uh, the billionaire made his chilling comment in response to a story shared by his friends about NASA's preparation for the incoming monster space rock named after the Egyptian god of chaos, Apophis. Musk's friend Joe Rogan shared an article. Oh, uh, yeah, we're getting our news from Joe Rogan now. Uh, Musk's friend Joe Rogan, I, I like Joe. Don't, don't get me wrong, but... <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to take what he has to say as, as fact. Uh, anyway, Musk's friend Joe Rogan shared an article about this huge asteroid, and Musk replied, Great name! Wouldn't want to worry about this particular one, but a big rock will hit Earth, and we currently have no defense. There is no defense. Lucky for us, Apophis would skim past uh, the Earth within 19,000 miles of the surface. Well, that's pretty close. I mean, considering, uh, yeah, that's that's that that's pretty darn close. You know, uh, I, I I don't know, but uh, yeah, nineteen thousand miles. Apophis, not really the nicest of guys. If you have read stories on on Apophis, <laughs> but yeah, thanks, Joe. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Oh. Now, this happened, uh, since I'm on the New York Post, we'll stick there for this next article. Uh, this happened, apparently, um, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Thousands of birds killed by baseball-sized hail in Montana storm. That's big hail. I would not want to be hit by baseball-sized hail. <laughs> the thing about Trump. Ugh. <laughs> what, what are we talking about here? I'm going to get the chat over quick. It's Free and Slave says, so creepy Bo J Joe Biden, Bo Jiden. Joe Biden is not going to be a Dem candidate. He's not. Down to Warren and Sanders, slam dunk for the orange one. <laughs> Uh, it really, I, I don't care. I don't, I, they could put anybody in the world they want in there. I, I wouldn't give a crap who it was. The president is a useless figurehead. The only thing is, if you have to listen to the idiot talk for a certain amount of time, that, that's the only thing that affects me, is having to listen to the words of whichever moron is in there. Uh, but, you know, the president, they, they don't matter. They, they matter zero. Moosey out. Hey, Zach, how the hell you doing, man? <laughs> All right. All right, so more than 11,000 waterfowl and wetland birds were killed after baseball-sized chunks of hail fell on Montana Wildlife Management Area last weekend, according to state officials. Ducks and shorebirds with broken wings, smashed skulls, and other signs of internal bleeding were found on the shores around Big Lake Wildlife Management Area in Molt, Montana. Uh, most of the injured birds were not expected to survive. About 20 to 30 percent of the entire bird population at the lake died in the storm, according to the FWP wildlife biologist Justin Bow. Local weather reports said the towns of Molt in Rapelogy, I guess, uh, both located near the wildlife management area, received two inches of hail in conditions of 70 mile per hour winds. That's a hell of a storm. So, uh, anytime you start getting baseball sized hail, 70 miles per hour winds, something's getting damaged where you live. Let me just tell you right now. Anyway, the, the, uh, that was according to a press release. The hailstorm reportedly flattened crops. I would imagine so. Shattered windows, I would imagine so. And damaged roofs and vehicles in the area. Yeah, um, I, I got no problem believing all that. 
Big Lake Wildlife Management Area's lake and surrounding wetlands serve as the nesting area for dozens of species of ducks, Canada geese, double-crested cormorant, cormorants, shorebirds, gulls, pelicans, and other waterfowl. Officials will continue to monitor for signs of diseases, including botulism, which is caused by rotting carcasses. Well, you might want to check D.C. then, because it's full of rotting carcasses. Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> I think D.C. is a rotting carcass, for that matter of the fact. <laughs> oh, man. So, there you go. Uh, feel bad for the birds? All right, that's fine. But uh, baseball size hail, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be no fun for anybody involved in all of that. All right. <laughs> so sometimes I I look at the the headlines of links that I have saved in my read later thing and uh I just oh man, I can't even believe half the stuff but uh, these these are the things that I save and uh, and and decide to share uh, with you uh as 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 I tend to do, as I as I will want to do. Uh, so here it is from K O A T seven Action News out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Report: Woman burns bloodied Pennywise doll that dropped from the sky into her yard. <laughs> A New Jersey woman was not taking any chances after a creepy clown doll fell from the sky and landed in her yard. Renee Jensen, 42, told NJ.com she was relaxing outside in her Harrington Park home on Saturday when she spotted something fly through the air. Did a freaking bird die in midair or something, she wondered? She was spooked when she realized it was a plush, a cartoon Pennywise, the evil clown from Stephen King's It!, the doll's mouth was reddened with fake blood, and some strange letters were scrawled on its forehead. It came at an angle, and I just watched this thing. It didn't hit a single tree. It went straight over, just cleared the gate, and hit the pine branches and hit the ground. She, remained, uh, she remains completely confused about where the doll could have come from. She has only one neighbor who is not home when Pennywise arrived. If you saw how many trees we have and where this thing came from, it made no sense at all, she said. It didn't even hit any of our trees until it was about to land at our gate. It looked like a dog toy they sell at Hot Topic or something. They sell dog toys at Hot Topic? Um, okay, I, I was I was unaware of that. Um, not that I have any reason to be aware of that one way or the other, but okay. Uh, anyway, Jensen eventually contacted a Thorita who did not find it funny. The officers suggested she get rid of the clown. Uh, they were hysterical, she said. They wouldn't touch it. They were totally creeped out, too. It was so funny. Uh, finally, Jensen burned uh, the bizarre plush creature. She said that the writing on its forehead was the most unsettling part. It looked like a weirdo occult satanic shit, she said, and he <laughs> adding that she tried Googling what the letters meant to no avail. Uh, Jensen said she slept with a knife in, and her bedroom door locked afterwards. <laughs> anyway, they, got a, they got a photo of it here. I, I can't really tell. Uh, oh, she had a stick of sage and she lit it. And she was walking around the whole entire property. So it looks like it says 0Q8FZ. I, 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 don't, I don't know. It looks more like a Chucky doll than a, than the than the clown from it, but um, uh, whatever. <laughs> Some kids are having fun, I would say, probably at her expense. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, I tell you. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> oh, another story. I probably should have covered this back when I was talking about the other global warming nonsense. 
But here we go. Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll get to it now. And this, coming from the propaganda site, uh, commonly known as the dailymail.com or the dailymail.co.uk, um, which is uh, where my particular choice comes from. Uh, here it is. And in, in case you believe anything they have to say, don't! <laughs> Spiders are getting more aggressive in response to climate change. Yes, climate change is making spiders aggressive. <laughs> They're not happy with you making the climate change. You, it's your fault, you dirty ass humans. <laughs> so, uh, it says here, experts examined female colonies of spider known as something that I can't pronounce. Um, it lives along the Gulf and Atlantic coast of the U.S. and Mexico. This region is directly in the path of tropical cyclones, which form in the Atlantic. Raging winds can demolish trees, defoliate entire canopies, and scatter debris. Tropical cyclones and other extreme weather events may be shaping the evolutionary future of spiders by making them more aggressive. Aggressive spiders, such as this one, Analosimius studosus, whatever, uh, which lives along the Gulf and Atlantic coasts of the United States and Mexico, have the best odds of survival. Raging winds can demolish trees, defoliate entire canopies, and scatter debris across forest floors, researchers warn. This radically alters a spider species' habitat and reshapes the evolutionary pressures of a variety of wildlife found in the ecosystem. Consensus among scientists, really? Consensus among scientists? You think that actually exists? Anyway, suggests that an increase in this type of extreme weather, which is not happening, there's no increase in this type of weather, is linked to man-made climate change. My ass. <laughs> Researchers from McMaster University examined female colonies of this spider. Uh, this species, you already put that all in. A, what are you repeating your article to make it longer? It's, it's what the hell are you guys doing? It's tremendously important to understand the environmental impacts of these black swan weather. Well, if they're black swan, how's that climate change? Uh, black swan weather events on evolution and natural selection. You see, black swan is a once in a once in a, in a long time occurrence. It's not that's that would not even come close to being a climate change, uh, according to some crazy biologist. Uh, a sea level rise, which is also not happening. I shared that earlier. The incidence of tropical storms will only increase. No, it won't. How many storms have we had this year? None. Uh, <laughs> now, now, more than ever, we need to contend with the ecological and evolutionary impacts of these storms. No, 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 we don't. Scientists had to tackle many logistical and methodolog methodological changes, which included anticipating the trajectory of tropical cyclones conducted uh, to conduct the research. Once a storm's path was determined, they sampled populations before the landfall, then returned to the sites within 48 hours. Ugh. Anyway, they go on talking about this nonsense as if this is actually true and you're supposed to believe it and by the fact that you, by eating meat, I think that's one of the primary things right now, you're eating meat, so you're you're making spiders more aggressive. You're farting. You're driving cars. You 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 breathe. Just your breathing is a problem. Yes, your breathing is a problem. They act like this CO2 is a greenhouse gas, which of course it's not, because greenhouse gases don't actually exist. It's nonsense. There's no possible way. For this gas to tra trap heat, <laughs> it's such crazy craziness. But everybody believes—not everybody—the the majority of people believe 
and this stuff called greenhouse gases because that's their main selling point. Even the, the anti-global warming people, the people that understand that global warming is a hoax, believe in the greenhouse gases, even though they don't think CO2 is one. But there are none. <laughs> yeah, date-legged freaks. That was that uh, David Arquette film, right? <coughs> anyway, um, so so they do everything they can to try and scare you and make you believe in this nonsense uh, in any way possible. Uh, everything that you possibly could do just by living uh, is, is a danger to the planet, uh, which, of course, it's not. <laughs> so... Anyway, let's let's go. This this is probably. I mean, if you're gonna die, if you're gonna die, uh, th th this is probably what's gonna kill you. Um, and uh, so beware of this particular uh, thing because, yeah, it is a killer. It's a thing called death. <laughs> Love that woman, Samantha Fish there, with no angels. Yes, indeed, she is awesome. Anyway, before that, we had a uh, uh, request from Prince uh, Charles Manson doing a song called Garbage Dump. <laughs> Rather funny, uh, comedical even. And we kicked it off there with Motorhead, a uh, Meisterbrow Woodman uh, request there. Killed by death. Uh, apparently not killed by jumping out of an airplane at 5,000 feet, because it seems you can survive that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I've never jumped out of an airplane. or And, and I've also never done any uh, bungee jumping or uh, any similar activities. Uh, somehow, I don't, I don't want to be tied to a big old bungee cord. It just don't sound like a, a fun time to me. I, I don't know why. It seems like uh, something that I'm, I'm going to probably avoid uh, for the rest of my natural life. Maybe once I'm dead, if people want to, like, uh, hook me up to a, a, <laughs> a bungee cord, hook my corpse up to a bungee cord and throw it out of an airplane, I, I'm fine with that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't really care at that point uh, what happens. It's... Uh, <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> oh, but while I'm still breathing, yeah, no, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I did do some uh, diving off of uh, yeah, kind of rocks into a big pond, I guess, if you if you want to call it that. Um, I'm at a place called Indian Flats down there in San Diego. San Diego County, northern San Diego County, uh, up in the mountains, uh, which was interesting, kind of fun, uh, although I do know that people also had jumped into that pond at other times uh, and uh, did not do real well because there are rocks that, that kind of poke up from the bottom there that uh, you can't always avoid. All right, this uh, next next thing here I'm going to share with you, it's uh, like a health tip, health, health kind of thing. And I, and I I do these from time to time, uh, sharing various supplements or such type things uh, with you, um, and, and and I usually share them after I've been uh, using a supplement of similar type. Uh, this one is about zinc, the uh, uh, element zinc, uh, and it's it's called 15 Incredible Benefits of Zinc. <laughs> Joe Skira, you're a funny dude, man. All right, uh, anyway, um, so here it is from OrganicFacts.net. The health benefits of zinc include proper functioning of the immune and digestive systems, controlled diabetes, reduction in stress levels, improved metabolism, and an increased rate of healing for acne and wounds. Also, it is helpful in terms of pregnancy, hair care, eczema, weight loss, night blindness, cold, eye care, appetite loss, and many other conditions. Now, I, I used to take uh, zinc on occasion, uh, 
days gone by, uh, in conjunction with vitamin C and echinacea to fight off oncoming colds or flus or whatever. And it works great. Uh, but taking it as a, on a regular daily basis uh, is, is, is I, I can't even describe uh, the, the benefits that I believe, uh, no empirical data, but I believe I'm getting from taking one of these zinc tablets every day, 50 milligrams. Of, of zinc per day. Uh, even though the zinc I have is really old, uh, it still seems to be working great. Uh, so here, here it is. What is the importance of zinc? Zinc, being an important mineral, plays a vital role in protein synthesis and helps regulate cell production in the immune system of the human body. It's mostly found in the strongest muscles of the body and is found especially in especially high concentrations in white and red blood cells, retina, skin, liver, kidneys, bones, and pancreas. The semen and prostate gland in men can also contain significant amounts of zinc. And let me just say, my eyesight has improved uh, since, since starting about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, uh, taking a zinc tablet every day. Um, and for me, that's a huge thing because my eyesight's not been all that great. Um, uh, I, I, I never really had a prostate or semen issue, but um, <laughs> I do notice uh, how to put this gingerly. <laughs> it reduces shrinkage. Um, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, men, uh, it reduces the, the zinc. Uh, seems to contribute to reduction of shrinkage uh, of a certain organ. <laughs> All right. In the human body, there are more than 300 different enzymes that require zinc to function normally. Researchers believe there are 3,000 proteins out of approximately 100,000 that have this vital mineral. A normal person has 2 to 3 grams of zinc at any given time. There are organs in the human body which secrete it, such as salivary gland, the prostate gland, the pancreas. Even cells involved in the activity of immune systems secrete zinc. It is used up in various met metabolic processes and eliminated through normal excretory and urinary channels. So it needs to be replenished often. If it isn't, you will begin to suffer from deficiency symptoms, a list of which can be found right here. Uh, growth retardation, low blood pressure, retarded gr bone growth, loss of appetite, loss of smell and taste senses, depression, uh, rough skin, pale skin, weight loss, diarrhea, hair loss, fatigue, uh, white spots under your fingernails. The most important food sources for zinc are meat, sorry vegetarians, and other products like oysters, turnips, peas, oats, peanuts, Almonds, whole wheat grain, pumpkin seeds, ginger root, and pecan nuts have similar, but still worthwhile in beneficial mineral. The most important health benefits of this mineral are listed below here. Uh, skin care, uh, for, for, for one, relieves eczema, prevents prostate disorder, in case any of you are having problems with that, improves cognitive function. Now, this is a very important one, especially for someone like me or others that are getting up there in the years. I will be 59 years old tomorrow. Um, so, improving cognitive function is a big one for me. So, it says zinc has a strong impact on mental functions because it can pair up with B6 to ensure proper function of neurotransmitters that communicate within the body. This has been highlighted in a study published in the journal Progress in Brain Research by researcher Christopher Fredrickson uh, the, at the University of Texas, Dallas. It's also found in high concentrations in the hippocampus, which controls thought and memory. For those who have suffered an injury, zinc, brain function, zinc keeps brain function strong as it is naturally, di naturally diverted to other parts of the body for healing purposes. It improves your sense of taste and smell. 
a bonus. I, I don't know if that's a real big one, but it, that is a bonus, especially if you like the taste of food or coffee or whatever. Helps treat cold. Uh, researchers from Michigan have shown a link between the integrity of the immune system and zinc levels in the body. Zinc supplements uh, help in decreasing the severity of an and duration of cold and other mild illness. This mineral reduces the number of pro-inflammatory cyt cytokines, uh, which aggravate the body during cold and other infections. Also, its ability to sim stimulate white blood cell activity makes it ideal for reducing colds and infections. Uh, weight loss. Zinc plays a leading role in weight loss for fatsos like myself. Uh, a number of studies have connected it with a decrease in appetite, which prevents overeating. This is related to zinc's manipulation of the ghrelin hormone, which tells the body when it wants to eat. It boosts your reproductive health. Uh, essential for repairing and functioning of DNA, essential for the rapid growth of cells, and for the building of major constituents of the cell over the course of a pregnancy. The enormous development of the enzymatic activity that takes place during pregnancy make it one of the most important nutrients for infants and mothers. In males, zinc assists sperma, spermatogenesis and the development of the sex organs. While in females, it aids in the reproductive phases, including the parturition and lactation stages. When it comes to sperm, the mineral plays a major role in a number of ways. First of all, it acts as sort of a sedative for the sperm, so they don't expend unnecessary energy. It also protects, protects reproductive DNA from the sperm from breaking down. It stimulates protein synthesis, regulates cell growth, prevents cancer. That could be important. It relieves chronic fatigue. It gives re relief from alopecia, which is, oh, a loss in hair in both children and adults. So you baldies might want to use it for that reason. Um, <laughs> thanks, Meister Brow. Uh, anyway, controls bone loss. So any of you might get osteoporosis. Controls bone loss. Big one. Um, it helps reduce night blindness. So if you have trouble uh, seeing or driving during the night, then uh, there you go. It's recommended to consume foods like beef, lamb, oysters, buckwheat, and crabs as they are hoarded with zinc and will improve your ability to see. It's particularly helpful for those suffering from night blindness. Vitamin A, which is an essential part of improving night vision, stimulates certain enzymes that cannot function without the zinc. So you can eat all the carrots you want. If you're zinc deficient, it ain't helping you out. So uh, there you go. Take some zinc. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a particular one that I can recommend to you. Like I said, the one that... Um, that I was using. Let me see if I got the bottle here. Uh, it's just called, apparently it was from Savon Osco. Natural high potency zinc, 50 milligrams. And I, that, these, I don't even think Savon's still in business. This is a really old bottle. <laughs> see, uh, January 2006, it says here on the bottle. 2005, excuse me. <laughs> but it's still, it seems to be working. So uh, there you go. Uh, get, take your zinc, and uh, you will be happy that you uh, did. Oh, man. So anyway, good stuff, good stuff. Take your zinc. Yum, yum, yum. I don't, I don't know. Not really tasty, but whatever. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I don't know if any of y'all are vapors out there. Some of you probably are vapors. I've never vaped anything. But uh, apparently they are they are they are into the process now of demonizing vapors, vaping, and such things, and and they are going at it hard and strong. This article on futurism.com here was the first one I came across this week, although I've heard on the radio to anti vaping type stuff. 
Vaping black market cannabis oil is putting people into comas. Black market cannabis oil. They want you to buy from their dispensaries. The legal, quote unquote, legal dispensaries. Um, which, screw that, but whatever. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I would avoid those places. And get your get your uh, if you're using cannabis oil to vape, uh, get it from your your local guy, the same guy you've been getting it from for twenty thirty years, if if you have those people, you know. Uh, anyway, so uh, according to this, uh, black oil, black market cannabis oil is putting people into comas. Some of the vape cartridges, <laughs> and listen to this fear fear propaganda. Some of the vape cartridges. Contain a chemical Nazis used in gas chambers. Seriously. Okay. Let me just say this. For any of you out there that drink fluoridated water or use fluoridated toothpaste, you may uh, be interested to know that one of the primary chemicals the Nazis used in gas chambers was fluoride. They don't talk about that here. No, they talk about vape chemicals contain <laughs> chemicals Nazis used in the gas chambers. Anyway, they talk about this Wisconsin guy that is currently in a medically induced coma. Huh. Why would he be in a medically induced coma if the cannabis put him the vaped cannabis put him in a coma. Anyway, it was sold under a mysterious black market name, according to them, and a new, newly published story. Inverse digs deep into Dank Vapes. Dank Vapes, a popular brand of vape cartridges containing cannabis oil. The patient's brother has told several media outlets he blames Dank Vapes for the severe heart and lung damage that left his sibling fighting for his life. Dank Vapes, yes. Bear that name in mind. Uh, now based on the Inverse's investigation, Dank Vapes isn't so much an actual company as it is a decentralized brand. And they hate decentralized. Oh, they really, really hate decentralized. Uh, and because that brand is currently popular with people who like vaping cannabis, Dank Vapes has become the packaging of choice for many black market sellers of weed concentrates. They act like a cannabis company, but they don't actually exist. They're, they're the, the packing in, packaging industry. Uh, Mark Hawashi, the founder for the cannabis-focused Dowaja app, told Inverse, these people are just filling cartridges as dank vapes. It's not a singular facility. It's just people in their garages filling them and selling them <laughs> in their garages. <laughs> because they're sold on the black market, dank vape products aren't subject to any regulations, and they hate that. Oh, something not regulated? We can't have that! Uh, the <laughs> That means buyers often don't actually know what is in the vape cartridges they're purchasing, and that can be incredibly dangerous. Ooh, boogeyman. All right. <laughs> For example, Myron Rone, CEO of cannabis testing lab Bill Costa Labs, told Inverse his company frequently finds unsafe levels of microbutanol. Microbutanol. I think that's how you say that. In black market cannabis products. When heated, the fungicide releases hydrogen cyanide, one of the chemicals found in Zyklon B, a poison Nazi used, the Nazis used in gas chambers during the Holocaust. Well, how come you're not warning us off of fluoride, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, beware of the dank vapes, because they are the boogeyman. Yes, they're coming to get you, the boogeyman. 
anyway, um, then I came across this article here today. Um, patient's death. <laughs> yeah, free. Like on B, the teeth and bones are strong. All right. Anyway, that's this article today from uh, WISN.com. Patient's death may be the first in the U.S. tied to vaping. Yes, vaping bad, bad. Vaping bad. And well, unless you're using the legal versions, the regulated versions, the controlled versions. Good night, Vinny. Um, uh, Illinois health officials are reporting what could be the United States' first death tied to vaping. Now, I guarantee you're going to hear this story as this guy died from vaping. When they say right here, what could be, you're not going to hear what could be. You're going to hear he died from vaping. In a Friday news release, the Illinois Department of Public Health says a person who recently vaped died after being hospitalized with severe respiratory illness. The agency didn't give any other information about the patient, including a name or where the person lived. Melanie Arnold, an agency spokeswoman, says the death is the first in the United States that could be linked to vaping. The release also says the number of people who have experienced respiratory illness after vaping doubled to 22 in the last week. Uh, in a Wednesday news release announcing 149 cases of severe lung illness nationwide that may be tied to vaping. The CDC said no deaths associate, associated with vaping had been reported. So, take it for what it's worth. But, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Free and Slave points out here in the, the chat, millions of people vaping. People die all the time for this or that. But let's tie it to vaping. Popcorn lungs. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, <laughs> see, uh, Hansel's talking about it eliminates pests. I, I'm thinking the Zyklon B is talking about there without leaving a st sticky chemical film. Um, yeah, they were probably using vaping masks all set free. Oh, great. Uh, it wasn't fluoride. It was Zyklon B. Yes, uh, Toscura. That's what, that's what they're talking about here. But they also did use fluoride in those chambers. At least that's my understanding. That's what I've always read. Uh, I, I could I could be I could be confused corn fused on that matter, but uh, yes, I did read they did use fluoride gas to to kill many uh, people uh, in those chambers in those gas chambers. Um, but then again, I'm, I'm anti fluoride to begin with, so um, <laughs> I may have a slight bias on that. Uh, compared with smoky, how many? Uh, well, compared with uh, all all the other things that government does, how many people does government kill every year? And I'm not talking just here in the U.S. of A., but globally. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Smoking versus vaping with the nicotine, I don't know. Um, I, not I, 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 I have no idea. I don't have that information, those numbers. Anyway, we're going to play some more music right now here for you. We're going to kick it off with The Who from back in 1969. Yes, indeed. Uh, hope you like The Who. It's not the best audio on this recording, but I still enjoy the song, so here you go. Because there ain't no cure. <laughs> All right, very nice, very nice there. Um, that was uh, Joe Bonamassa, Dusty Hill, Derek Trucks, and Billy Gibbons with the Freddie King induction there. Uh, it's a Miss Kate request. Thank you very much, Kate. That's awesome, beautiful stuff. Before that, from Reason.com, Remy uh, doing all Bob's money to uh, the Beatles. All oh, my loving. Funny, funny stuff, uh, all too true. And we kicked it off with the Who. Doing summertime blues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We bob. 
uh, yeah, Solomon, Solomon called me this week to wish me a happy birthday. He called on Thursday. He thought my birthday was on the uh, 22nd. Uh, but no, it's the 24th, which is tomorrow or today for some of y'all. Um, <laughs> my brother Solomon, yes, brother Solomon, uh, he's an awesome guy. Uh, anyway, he also uh, wanted to say hi and howdy to all of the Real Liberty Media people uh, that are out there listening, tuning in. Uh, everybody, he, he mentioned uh, several of you by name, and uh, we miss Solomon. Uh, he, he, he can no longer do his call-ins like he used to do, which is a shame, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, oh, what the hell happened there? All right. Um, so, uh, Solomon, we miss you, brother. Um, and uh, he used to call in and give us all kinds of great information about the uh, militarized world that we live in, the militarized state. Uh, and he is, uh, like, like uh, Free and Slave said, in an undisclosed location. So, um, to you, wherever you may be, Mr. Solomon, best of all, thanks for calling. Thanks for the best wishes for me and uh, Beth Z's birthday. So, uh, appreciate it, and uh, I'll hear from you again I know. I know I will. All right. So, um, <laughs> have you seen the news? I have seen the news. Uh, yes, there is political turmoil and uh, other kinds of turmoil all over the world. <sighs> let's, let's see what this one's all about here. From a Zero Hedge talking about turmoil all over the world and uh, the militarized world we are living in. Because I found this to be total and absolute nonsense when I read it the other day. <laughs> and I told them, as all the people, because I found it on Twitter, and so all the Twitter people say, go to hell, just as I did, and so do all the commenters here say, go to hell as well. This is on Zero Hedge via the conservative treehouse. Big government energy nanny state tells Americans set your thermostat to 82 degrees while sleeping. Kiss my hairy ass. Alright, it's not really hairy. But kiss my ass all the same. Um, <laughs> from the same Department of Energy and EPA that gave us toilets don't that don't flush, light bulbs that don't light, dishwashers that don't wash, plant-based based fuel that burns like carrots and paper straws that dissolve in a liquid. Now we get this. Energy Star, the federal program from the Department of Energy and the Environmental Protection Agency said the coolest you should keep your home is 78 degrees when you're home. I'm looking at my thermometer right now. I see 72 degrees. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, when you're at home, work, or away, the program recommends setting it at 85 degrees. When you're sleeping, the Energy Star said to set the thermostat at 82 degrees. Setting thermostat at 82 degrees at night is a well-recognized grounds for divorce. I swear these administrative state progressives are going to have to force uh, have us force fed sustainable algae cakes if this keeps up. Some journalist type person journalist type person published these new cooling standards on Twitter and the responses are quite funny. I see we've decided to give up on sleeping, or going home for that matter, or having pets that aren't native to the rainforest. I've already embraced the dying earth, so I keep my central air between 67 and 72 at all times. I'd be laying there making a giant sweat angel in my bed. <laughs> New report shows that uh, these recommended temps for s smelling like an onion... 
I have no idea how my ancestors survived. It says desserts here. I think they mean deserts. Uh, if the thermostat in my house showed a number uh, that started with an eight, I I would I, I would call the police. What? Why would you call the police? They'll just come and shoot you. Anyway, uh, but seriously, given the track record for the current energy efficient standards and how they ended up being actually applied to life, toilets, dishwashers, light bulbs, etc., it's darn frightening to think the feds believe 78 degrees went home, 85 went away, and 82 when sleeping is a reasonable cooling standard. Insta misery, a.k.a. living in hell. Watch out, California. Pretty soon you might not have options when the proletariat mandates the installation of compliance regulators inside of your AC system. <laughs> Go straight to hell. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't doing it, boys. No way in hell. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Well, let me let me cover this one for you. Not that it's actually anything important or anything, but it cracked me up when I read the headline. So I thought I'd save it and share it with y'all. <laughs> Talk about your boners <laughs> on gizmodo.com. This man's penis is literally turning into a bone. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. All right. Doctors at a New York City hospital made an alarming discovery last week when a 63-year-old man went to the emergency room for knee pain. Uh, the man reportedly decided to visit the Lincoln Medical and Mental Health Center when he began feeling pain after he fell on the sidewalk while walking with a cane. According to an article that will be published in September issue of Urology Case Reports, since the man had fallen on his butt, the doctors took an x-ray of his pelvic region and noticed something unusual. The authors, most of whom work for the Lincoln Medical, wrote that the images showed an extensive plaque-like calcification along the expected distribution of the penis. The patient complained to the doctors of penile pain, but he didn't have any discharge, a swollen prostate, or other clear penis-related symptoms. As doctors would later discover, his penis was literally turning bone-like because of a rare condition. Yep, that's a severe boner. <laughs> Penile ossification is caused by calcium salt buildup in the penis, soft tissue. The authors wrote that uh, there are less than 40 published cases of, uh, the re of penile ossification. In 2017, reviews from urology documents uh, the case of a 43-year-old man who sought medical help after pain in his mid-shaft area spread to his entire shaft. Doctors initially removed fibromas or fibrous benign tumors from his penis. A few months later, the patient decided to have an inflatable, <laughs> inflatable penile prosthesis implanted. <laughs> Because he'd experienced ED, uh, the doctors found what appeared to be calcified tissue along 80% of the shaft. The doctors determined that the patient had perioni disease or penile fibrosis. According to the authors of the urology case report study, the 63-year-old patient who went to Lincoln Hospital also likely had perioni disease. Uh, I don't know if that's how you say that. But they were not able to make a certain diagnosis. The patient left without getting tests or treatment, according to the paper, even though he had ossification along the entire shaft. We couldn't assess the following etiologies cause since our patient decided to leave 
against medical device. I guess he liked his boner and wanted to keep it. <laughs> that's that there, that there, that that's better than uh, Viagra. Let me tell you. <laughs> Oh, God. Now, this guy, I guess he was severe, sincere, sincere in his words, sincere in his words, the president of Brazil says to poop less for a cleaner planet. Just quit pooping. Just hold that shit in. <laughs> Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro suggested Friday that people poop every other day as a way to save the environment after he came under fire for a surge in deforestation of the Amazon since he came to power. The far-right leader offered this idea in response to a journalist's question as to whether it was possible to simultaneously spur economic growth, feed the world's hungry, and preserve the environment. It's enough to eat a little, eat a little less. You talk about environmental pollution. It's enough to poop every other day. That will be better for the whole world, said Bolsonaro, who earlier this month sacked the head of a government agency that reported a major increase in deforestation. You know, you're not doing yourself any favors uh, allowing the deforestation to go on and then suggest people just hold their shit. <laughs> Bolsonaro had been criticized for a rapid acceleration in deforestation of the Amazon rainforest, which covers vast swaths of Brazil and is considered vital to combating global warming. <laughs> According to Brazil's National Institute for Space Research, which tracks clear cutting of the rainforest, around 2,254 square kilometers, 870 square miles, of the Amazon were cleared in July alone, an increase of 278% from a year ago, so almost three times as much. That followed a 90% increase in June, compared to the prior year, allowing uh, uh, figures that Bolsonaro has called lies. Yeah, we got the, we got the pictures to prove it, buddy. Uh, which prompted the sacking of the INPE chief, Ricardo Galvalo. Uh, the rapid rise in deforestation has triggered a global outcry and threatens to create problems for the recent free trade agreement between South America and the trade bloc known as Mercosur. So, basically, what it comes down to is, just hold your shit. <laughs> if you want to believe this lying scumbag that's deforesting the Amazon. Ah, what a horrible human being he is. <sighs> All right, Windows people. Windows people. You know who you are. All right. I do run two Windows machines. Windows uh, operating system users. Windows released an update for your system. A security update for your system. And what does it do? <laughs> it breaks your VB apps, your Visual Basic apps. Yes, that's right. This week, Windows Update fixed critical, warmable, blue keep flaws, but may also break Visual Basic apps, macros, and scripts. Uh, after installing the update, applications that were made using VB6, which I wrote several of, macros using VB for applications, which I wrote several of, and scripts or apps using v Visual Basic Script Edition, which I really didn't use too much VB script, may stop responding and you may receive an invalid procedure call. Microsoft says the issue affects all supported versions of Windows 10, 7, 8.1 and their corresponding server versions. 
Microsoft is presently investigating the issue and will provide an update when available. Microsoft did not offer an explanation for the problem. Of course not, they never do. But it did flag, this, uh, flag earlier this month that it will move ahead sunsetting VBScript by disabling it in IE11. Who the hell uses IE11? Or IE of any version? I don't know, but stop it! <laughs> so, um, to change, this, the change to disable VBScript will take effect in the upcoming cumulative updates for Windows 7, 8, and 8.1 on August 13th, which was uh, a few days back, 10 days ago. Uh, Microsoft warned in a blog post, uh, the change brought uh, brought these versions of Windows in line with Windows 10. However, it's not clear that the issues under investigation are related to this measure. <sighs> Windows, every time it fixes something, it breaks several of the things. That's the Microsoft motto. <laughs> It's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> oh man, let me tell you. <laughs> it would be comical. Well, it is comical anyway. Um, yeah. All right. Speaking of Microsoft and terrible things they do, and those of you that are still using Skype may want to take this fact into account. Um, if you're using Skype, you could just use Wire. Wire is great. You can do all your group calls, video calls uh, on Wire, and, 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 and nobody's tracking you. It's, it's awesome. So use Wire instead. Uh, and there's a link right on the front page of reallibertymedia.com there. On the menu it says Get Wire, and that will take you, link, take you right to the free version of wire there's also a paid version that you can get if you want but the the free version works great uh, most of the people here at Real Liberty Media now use wire and no longer use Skype and so get rid of it get rid of it um, it's, it's it's so much better and it's, it's much lighter on your system resources but back to the article from Breitbart.com Microsoft admits imagine that they actually admit it, that human workers are listening to your Skype calls. In an update to the company's privacy policy, tech giant Microsoft has noted that human workers, well, subhuman, uh, semi-human, they're working for Microsoft. They're, they're probably not really human. <laughs> anyway, Microsoft noted that human workers may or are listening to Skype and Cortana recordings. This is an admission by the software giant that media reports in early August based on internal leaks about contractors monitoring Skype calls are correct. So yes, your tinfoil hats were working as planned, working correctly. Yes, indeed they were. Recently, leaked insider information revealed that Microsoft contractors have been listening in on some Skype and Cortana recordings. Most, all, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the leaked documents and screenshots obtained by Motherboard reveal that Microsoft contract workers are listening in on personal conversations of Skype users that are using the app's translation service. According to the Skype's website, in company reserves, uh, or the company reserves the right to analyze audio and phone calls through the app's translation feature in order to improve the translation service. However, it does not note that human workers will be doing some of the analysis by listening in on calls. According to the audio obtained by Motherboard, the recorded calls include conversations between loved ones, some talking about personal issues, and other discussing relationship problems. A Microsoft contractor who provided a number of files to Motherboard stated 
the fact that I can even share some of this with you shows how lax things are in term of pro terms of protecting user data. Now, I guarantee you, they're talking about just the translator service here. <laughs> it goes far, far wider than that, especially on the Cortana stuff. I, I, I just, you know, if you're if you're still on the Skype, um, find 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 another way. Whether it, it doesn't have to be wire. I mean, there's plenty of other use things out there you can use. Um, Discord Discord works great for uh, audio uh, chat and phone. Or, 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 I don't know if they have video. Do they have video? I think I think I think Discord just has audio. Um, but uh, e either way, uh, just get the get the hell off of the Skype. It's 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 a horrible horrible system there. So um, yeah yeah. That's uh, ten. That's ten. That's ten and fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen and. Um, all right. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm doing a little math in my head here. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I tell you. 14 in for it. It's uh, 18, 18, 18, 18. Okay. I got time for one more story. <laughs> oh. Okay. A little good news story. Maybe good news. Oh, the article's no longer there. The article is invalid or no longer published. Okay, well, I was going to give you some good news out of Baltimore uh, that apparently um, if you if the cops smell you with pot, uh, then then they can no longer search you uh, for having that pot. But the article posted on WBAL.com has been pulled. It is gone. It is missing. So maybe the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They decided not to let people know that if the cops smell you with pot that you can't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, since we were talking about recording you, how about you recording other people using lenses in your eye? <laughs> From anonhq.com. I don't think these guys are actually uh, associated with uh, any anonymous type group, but I could be wrong. Sony patent. Contact lenses taking pictures and recording videos when you blink with Nikola Tesla technology. We can probably all agree on one thing. That technological gadgets are becoming smaller and smaller by the day. Now contact lenses are getting smarter. Well, soon. And all thanks to nanotechnology. Tech giant Sony has ramped up their technology from something that we've only seen in James Bond movies to now being our reality. The company has filed a patent for that reveals how their smart contact lenses will take pictures and record videos with just the simple blink, storing them into small memory space on the lens or on the user's eyeballs. Not only is Sony striving for this, but other tech giants such as Samsung and Google have made plans for their smart contact lenses, going public with their ideas of taking pictures, making videos, and monitoring Sugar intake? Gamers will soon uh, also experience enhanced gaming and other other possibilities are endless. However, Sony's patent doesn't mean we'll be seeing them anytime soon. Nevertheless, Sony's release of the lens will contain picture-taking unit, a central controlling unit, the main unit, along with antenna, uh, storage area in piezoelectric sensor. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, I've I've seen these in sci-fi films before, but uh, wow, there you go. All right, we got to do. A, I, I got to do my last set here for you all, um, and hopefully, yeah, I think I have just the right amount of time left to do this particular set for you. So here you go, and enjoy kicking it off with a song about me.
Well, maybe not me. Maybe a lot of you. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Yeah, that's Christopher Amoroso doing a Black Betty there for you. Before that, we had Rob Zombie with Dragula, Philip Sace, Blues, Ain't Nothing But a Good Woman on Your Mind, and uh, we kicked it off there with Motor Head in I Ain't No Nice Guy. I Ain't No Nice Guy. Don't you think I am? All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, tomorrow, stick around on RLM Radio all weekend, actually. Uh, tomorrow is the dark table at noon Eastern with Flash somebody and whoever he can grab as a co-hostage. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues, and we'll be playing trivia here in the chat room for three hours, right on up to Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop-ass. Um, yeah. And then I'll be back on Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern with Grim Leftovers there for you. Tuesday is uh, Flash once again uh, doing his show in a perfect world. Well, his and Vin Vincent's, if uh, Vincent comes around. This is going to be Grammys last week, Wednesday, and then Friday. And that'll be it for the Grammys rocket chair, at least for the time being. She may come back with it. Who knows? We'll see about that. Anyway, check the schedule on RealLibertyMedia.com. Oh, yeah, don't forget on Thursday evening as well, the new show with Prince and Poopster uh, Power Hour. So, uh, you know, that's on the schedule, too. So everything's up there on the schedule. Check it out. So have yourselves a great weekend. I appreciate everybody tuning in, doing the requests, doing the chat, uh, just, you know, all that stuff. So uh, we'll talk to you all later. Peace.